Welcome to day 31, week five of our 40 days of preparation. The theme for this week is the Great Commission. We'll be taking our thought today out of Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. We're going to entitle this, Make Disciples. What does it say? Well, Matthew 28, 19 and 20 are the ESV, the English Standard Version reads, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, what does it mean? These are some of the concluding words Jesus shared with his disciples and maybe other followers before his ascension. He used the word therefore in the start of this sentence. A wise young man reminded us recently that whenever we see therefore, we need to see what it is there for. Jesus said to the eleven and maybe others, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus had won back the full authority that Adam and Eve compromised by acting on the half-truths of the devil, disobeying God. One of the first things Jesus does now that he has that authority is to tell his group of disciples to go and set other captives free by making them disciples or disciplined followers of Jesus in both word and deed. He tells his disciples to go and set the captives in all nations free and to do it by baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. This sounds like an impossible task, particularly for the eleven. But Jesus adds, and behold, look, see, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. As one, minister, as one minister said, the difficulty of a job is measured by the capacity of the doer. And in this case, Jesus and the Holy Spirit that enabled him while he ministered here on earth is the doer. What does this mean to us? Jesus' disciples were not only disciples or followers of Jesus, but Jesus called them to be disciple makers like he was. Jesus even modeled the process for them as he, led by the Holy Spirit, ministered to the woman at the well in Samaria and brought salvation not only to her, but through her to a town in Samaria, a place most respected Jews look down on? Or what about the example of Zacchaeus, a tax collector, who most Jews hated, but Jesus saw him, though he was short of stature, in a sycamore tree. Jesus brought salvation to his house, for Jesus came to seek and to save the lost, as he said in Luke 19.10. The new disciples won over for Jesus are to be taught by their disciple maker to observe how Jesus and the apostles were disciple makers and to take that same model and by prayer and the Holy Spirit make disciples who themselves will become disciple makers. If we are spirit led and diligent to do this, we can exponentially reach people from all all nations with the gospel and with the love of Christ. How should we re respond to this? Well, first of all, let's be honest. Many of, us, many of us have known about the Great Commission for a long time, but we have avoided the uncomfortableness of it. Well, any disobedience is sin. And as we noted over the first week of our 40 days of preparation, all sin needs to be confessed and repented of as we walk forward in obedience to the Word of God. For many of us, this must be our first response, repentance. We need to fall to our knees 
and ask God to give us compassion for the loss and boldness to do what is right, though uncomfortable. Then we need to remind ourselves of the times when the Lord asks us to do things that seem so overwhelming. But once we acted in obedience, we found that the Lord had ways that had not ever crossed our mind. Remember, Jesus says, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Just before this reminder of Jesus' presence being with us always, Jesus said, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. There's some teaching here at the rock that is available and more will be coming available to help us be better disciples, number one, and two, disciple makers. Let's pray that we grab this opportunity. The end of the age is surely coming. And these last days are our last opportunities. Well, what should our response be? Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for reminding us that not only have we been saved from destruction, but we've been saved to be used by you, to be used by you to complete the work that you started. And that work is to save souls. So help us, O oh Lord, to look at the world the way that you looked at the world, to see opportunities to win people to a saving knowledge of you, wherever we are in whatever we are doing. You did that for us. Many of us were not looking for you, but you found us. Now, Lord, as we travel this globe, wherever we might be, help us to see opportunities. Help us to see people who are going to hell, but need not. All they need is for someone to tell them and show them the way, the truth, and the life. We thank you for saving us, and we thank you for reminding us that you not only saved us, but you saved us to be used by you to save others. You made us a disciple, that we might go and make disciples, but not just disciples, disciple makers. We thank you, we honor you. Now help us to be obedient to what you're asking us to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.